20 years have passed since Tomb Raider 2 and a lot has changed. Not least of all, a fan-made version led by Nico Base that has just had a demo released for it. I wish I could have shown this to myself 20 years ago. It's a fantastic example of how far we've come, yet at the same time, how we can still value those games we played from our childhood. Funnily enough, back then there was nothing that I wanted more than to play games from the future. But is this remake good? No. It's incredible. Sorry about that. It really is though. The PlayStation 1 games had their charm, but were awfully blocky and unappealing to explore for games that were supposed to be about adventuring. Not so with this one. Nico Base has somehow made sense of a lot of the questionable architecture that we saw in the original. You can even tell that it's the Great Wall of China now. Every segment of the demo is worthy of a hundred screenshots, lavished in graphical and audio fidelity that puts all but the rebooted Tomb Raider games to shame. These last few years I really felt that graphical progress was slowing down, but this Unreal 4 remake shows just how far we've come. It's definitely a good 20 years ahead, even if it is produced by just a few people. A real testament to the potential that a few talented individuals can have with modern tools at their fingertips. Having now played through the demo, I can only imagine how difficult the design decisions must have been. Like, how to remain faithful to the original whilst bringing it up to modern standards. A few key locations you'll recognise, but a lot of the connecting areas, puzzles and fights are brand new. And I might say, for the better. I much prefer the controls too, which are a lot closer to the modern Tomb Raiders than they are to the block-based original. Though I did still die a lot. Almost always from falling. The team has made a good effort of highlighting grabbable ledges and the like, but these hints can still get lost within the lavishly detailed environments. Luckily, the checkpoint system is generous, and I usually only had to repeat 15 seconds of gameplay or so every time. Plus, watching Lara's mangled, ragdoll corpse plummet off the mountainside never gets old. Death seems to be used as a method of learning here. There are a few time-based traps where you can't hope to figure them out first time. None of them were too hard once you knew the trick, but don't expect to be observant enough to spot it first time. Also, anybody who knows the original level will be bracing themselves for that bit where the difficulty curve makes a cruel jump. You know that bit I mean. And yet, it never came. This demo decides to take a very different direction at this point, instead becoming its own thing and dropping the original's concepts entirely. I should be happy about this, since what we have instead is pretty awesome, but part of me wanted to be swallowed up by a lizard and shot at by a guy with a ridiculous accent. I don't know what I think about the key's placement either. The locked door is a lot sooner in the original and the underwater cave more obvious, making the key's obscure placement more forgivable. Whereas in this remake you can easily miss it, continuing on through a large part of the level before finding that you can't get through a door. At this point it requires a lot of backtracking to retrieve it, something none but the most hardened of Tomb Raider fans will bother doing. So I guess in that sense this remake is very faithful to games from the 90s. Plus the manual save system's broken right now. It can only keep one at a time it seems, and it's always the one you don't want it remembering. The combat is both easier and harder than the original game. With the original, provided you leapt over the enemy's head and did those overpowered 180 degree rolls repeatedly, you could just about defeat anything. For the remake, it's nice to have the keyboard and mouse movement, as well as an optional auto-aim. But you need fast reflexes to dodge the tigers and I would frequently find myself fighting while trapped in confined spaces where the gameplay felt limited and unfair. Most of these things are observations rather than criticisms. I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. It rewarded me for remembering the original, but also threw a load of new sequences into the mix to keep it fresh. It's a true joy to play through it again, now re-envisioned in a level of detail that we could only have dreamed of back in the day. He recently announced on Twitter that it was his plan to focus on Croft Manor next, which I think is a smart decision, as I can't even begin to fathom the work that the entire game would require. Whatever it becomes, it's certainly a project that I'll be keeping an eye on. Well done. <laughs>